Set in the heart of Manchester, just a short walk from Manchester Piccadilly Station, lies what initially seemed to me an unlikely venue for an RHS flower show. The depot, an iconic former railway station, sits adjacent to Mayfield Park, which, nearly two years ago, was opened as Manchester's first park in the city in over a 100 years. A 6.5-acre derelict brown site was transformed into a biodiverse haven as part of a 24-acre multi-use development, marking the start of what could become a series of green corridors across Greater Manchester. In this context, it seems then that this would be an ideal venue for the RHS to host its very first urban show, showcasing all things horticulture but with a distinct urban twist. The event celebrates and encourages urban gardening in all its forms and the depot, inherently Mancunian, provided the perfect backdrop oozing character through its industrious history. Here are Bill and Ben, the flowerpot men, to welcome us into the show. And there's a real air of excitement. Nobody quite sure what to expect. And as is now tradition, we have our picture taken underneath the sign for our thumbnails. And the first stand that we see is Blue Diamond. And this is the UK's largest garden centre group with 44 centres across the UK and Channel Islands. It started from a 56-acre nursery at Bridgemere in Cheshire, but they now own an additional five nurseries which grow and supply plants exclusively to their garden centres. So this was a lovely stand. It had beautiful plants all displayed in a home setting. So we've got the bathroom, we've got the bedroom, we've got the sitting room. And everywhere are these little glass jars with plants being propagated in them and this is a great thing to do if you're new to gardening it's literally just a case of breaking off a little bit of someone else's house plant um, a friend or relative and then just sticking it in a jar of water you don't need soil there's no mess it, it looks lovely and it just brightens up your home with a bit of green and more plants in this kitchen there are plants everywhere perhaps you can't have quite so many otherwise you would definitely wouldn't be able to do the dishes, but the concept is there. Um, plants just make a house a home. It just makes it come alive and gives you that enjoyment and greenery around you, which makes you feel a connection with nature. And I love these little slidey doors on the cupboards. A really good space saving solution if you're in a galley type kitchen. And as we pass by, we just spot this air plant. Air plants are great to grow because they don't need any soil and also they don't need to be watered. They just look after themselves. So what could be better? And perhaps the subdued lighting of this setting makes the plants really pop. And here's a stand in which this is definitely the case. This is um, all orchids, very vibrant colours. And in this lighting, they look really lovely. And this installation, freestanding modular frames are a demonstration of how vertical planting can transform your garden. All these plants are shade tolerant species bursting from this structural steel planters and weaving around suspended wildlife habitats. It shows how a challenging area in a smaller rented space can become an opportunity. A spiral garden inspired by the recurrence of the golden ratio, this installation consists primarily of edible plants and focuses on replicating sustainability. Designed to maximise growing within the smallest of spaces, it's built from foraged and found materials. And I'm really excited to show you this stand. This, I think, was my favourite at the show, at the Urban Show. It was absolutely beautiful by a company called Flourish Manchester and they've taken over this archway again. The setting just looked beautiful. It looked like a really sort of old fashioned um, floristry stall on a market. It was beautiful and they had quite an array of houseplants from all over the world. They had fresh flowers and they had lots of lovely dried flowers, which I particularly was interested in seeing. So they had the heliochrysums, the straw flowers. Um, there's the artichokes and a large array of different type of eucalyptus leaves. Status, of course, which I'm growing for the first time this year um, in our garden. Lots of different colours, eryngiums and just so many beautiful things. Lots of lovely ideas here. Um, more of the status and that solidago again, which we have in our garden. And I did dry some last year. Um, some more limonium, different shades, lots of different shades that it comes in. 
and um, this was a lovely little um, dried flower this is a wax flower that's not one that I'm growing but perhaps one I should look out for so lots of lovely plants and here are lots of tulips and yeah all of them you could buy so a beautiful storm perhaps it doesn't do it quite justice I think on camera just seeing it and be immersed in it and the smell and everything was all part of the experience but look at the backdrop to it it's lovely and next we see four sustainably designed balcony gardens facing north, south, east or west, which have been created by students with the help of acclaimed Manchester cloud gardener Jason Williams. Each balcony addresses different residents' needs, microclimates and their pay brackets and were designed to promote the benefits of urban wildlife, biodiversity and mental health. And we'll head now to a really immersive tree experience designed by Nathan Webster from Right Landscapes. Now, we met Nathan at the Tatton Flower Show last summer in July when he was the winner of the Young Designer competition. So it's lovely to see him back at this show and just seeing what he, what he can do. It's fabulous watching his um, career development. But before we do, we just pass by these contemporary floral sculptures and aren't they stunning? This one focuses on sustainable methods of floristry and the next one focuses on moss and the importance it plays on carbon processing and the third one illustrates the strength of nature at reclaiming abandoned man-made structures and finally this one explores textures as a way of defining Manchester's character in floral art form. All of them set against this genuine old brick wall it's not staged it's the genuine article and this little creation wasn't even labelled but we thought it looked beautiful the atmosphere and theatre of the natural woodland brought to the heart of the city by award-winning designer Nathan Webster Nathan Webster strongly believes in the importance of urban foresting and the retention of existing forests and their futures off the grid his RHS gold and best in show garden at the RHS flower show Tatton Park recreated an ancient woodland and that garden has now provided the basis for his latest project a forest in the heart of the city. Visitors were able to stroll through this incredibly atmospheric and immersive experience reflecting a woodland ecosystem Trees of varying stages, underplanted with ferns, show the life cycle of a real forest. And of course the lighting and the shadows that were created on the, the roof of the archway just added to this experience. It was absolutely stunning. So well done, Nathan. I think you've knocked out of the park again. However, you've also given yourself a rather hard act to follow, whatever that may be. I look forward to it very much. And I think now we'll just go and check out some of the retail and some of the beautiful little gift shops that are here. So this is just um, where you can buy some plants and some lovely plants to be seen. I um, particularly love this little GM. Isn't that gorgeous? I love GMs. And this one is called Pretty Coats Peach. And another lovely little one here called Tutti Fruity. That's nice too. And a lovely um, ranuncula, nice yellow ranuncula. And this beautiful little stall displays the work of artist Sophie Cook. And this is Sophie's husband, who we had a nice chat with. Sophie comes from an art and horticultural background, which informs the plants she grows and uses to create a cyanotype image. She then adds liquid gold leaf to the piece to highlight details of the plant. The end result is beautiful and you can head to her website via the link in the description if you'd like to see more of her work. Nestled in the Brecon beacons, the bees at Hlangatok Apries gather pollen from wildflowers and heathers all along the riverbanks on the slopes of the Black Mountains. Nothing is added or taken away from this pure honey, which I can confirm is delicious. The website details all their numerous honey-related products and I purchased some beeswax food wraps to wrap my sandwiches up when, every day when I go to work and save using endless amounts of foil and kitchen roll. Another natural product and this time lavender. Purple Cloud was created by Irish Kilkenny couple in an Aneef Dowling. The lavender is grown on 300 acres of rolling lavender fields in Aneef's home, beautiful Bulgaria. Purple Cloud plants, grows, harvests and steam distills all their lavender, protecting the entire process to ensure the highest quality products. All their soaps and candles are hand poured at their home in the Kilkenny countryside. 
And these mushroom growing kits looked interesting. The company based in Sussex is the brainchild of two sisters who are passionate about all aspects of growing good quality, sustainable and delicious mushrooms. And we'll head now to this RHS display just showing you how to grow house plants and what conditions they prefer. So the first display are all plants that like low light levels. So these plants can all survive in shady areas as long as it's not too dark. These plants can be placed on a north or north east facing room that gets very little direct sunlight. Plants in this category often need less water and grow more slowly. All of these plants are light loving house plants. These plants are all happiest with lots of light but that doesn't always mean direct sunlight. These plants, although they are light loving, only a few plants like cacti and succulents can tolerate the levels of direct sunlight offered by a south facing window. Most will become scorched. So give these plants bright but diffuse light. And the plants in this group are all thirsty plants. These plants are happiest when they have access to water, whether it be in the soil or in the air. So keep a close eye on the water levels in their surroundings. They may suffer if the soil dries out completely or they may prefer and thrive in more humid conditions. And seeing philodendrons in this category makes me realise the error of my ways. When Olivia went off to university, I was given the job of looking after her house plants and unfortunately I did manage to kill her philodendron because I had no idea it needed so much water so that's um, I'm feeling a bit guilty now. Sorry philodendron and sorry Olivia. Now this area is a demonstration of propagation techniques with scientific explanations behind the physiological process which demystifies the whole process and encourages beginners to grow. It focuses on upcycling with ready available inexpensive household items from colanders to pallets to creative compact growing spaces. This area was jam packed with lots and lots of inspirational ideas from using bricks, just any object, just look with new eyes at all objects you see around you, newspaper, anything can be used to grow things in. This is an old pallet, um, but it really was um, quite an eye opener and made, made us all realize that you don't need to buy things, you really don't. In fact, it looks so much nicer. I love this little brick with the plant in it. It looked so cute, but also growing vegetables in tiny, tiny spaces. It can be done. And um, this like using height as well, using vertical space um, as well um, as well as horizontal space, using every space you've got effectively. Lots more beautiful plants and lots of containers and other interesting, innovative ways of growing plants. So there's so much inspiration at this show. This new RHS show is also a great chance for new up and coming businesses to launch themselves into the horticultural market. And now let's go and have a chat with two such businesses. The first one is a gardening app called Hota and Tim will explain just what it's all about. Could you tell me a little bit about, a bit more about it, Tim? Yeah, so um, we're a family uh, kind of run startup app, and we've just launched we've just launched it on the App Store, um, and our app basically uh, is a garden design app for newcomers um, in the gardening scene. So if you're looking to design your garden but you don't know where to start, this app can kind of fill that void. So it takes your your location and um, it takes a rough idea of your soil ID. And then it also gives you specific planting plans for that garden. So if you're south facing or if you're north facing, it can, it can design a garden for shade or for sun. So it plans in those aspects and creates a planting um, plan and a schedule to maintain that uh, garden. And then you get regular updates on whether you need to prune or whether you need to deadhead, or whether you need to water, and then it can help you kind of maintain that over a long time, inform you how to, to start your garden, how to, to get to the perfect garden that you want. Um, yeah, right. so, that sounds yeah. fantastic. And can you tell me a little bit about your background, so we yeah. come from a gardening so, background? Um, I started gardening about eight years ago, and I um, worked in a little nursery near me, and then I worked in um, Bristol Botanic Garden, and then from then on 
I went on to Kew Botanic Garden. I studied for six years. Um, oh wow, so you've got a lot of experience. Yeah, yeah, loads <laughs> of experience. Um, and now I'm working on a, an estate in Wiltshire as a head gardener. So. so if you're an amateur gardener, you can literally take a photograph of any plant in it, perhaps in a new garden. Uh, yeah, the, the app hasn't got those uh, features of identification, but it, it will suggest you um, what the best parts to grow, and then from then it will give you a, a kind of a schedule and a recommendation for maintenance. Um, and do you pay for the app on a monthly basis? Or how so does that it's work? a one-off payment of £30, um, and you get all full features, so the features include um, the advice, the schedules, the updates, the notifications, right. and also the, the planting plan itself. Um, oh, sounds yeah. really helpful, really good. Yeah. Oh, thank you very much. It's lovely to meet you. Thank you very thank much. You. Bye -bye. Cheers. Hello, I'm with Bob from Mad About Land, and can you just tell me a little bit about the company and how you came to be? How we came to be. So it started um, on a stag weekend. Right. And, um, up in Scotland and I was walking back from one of the events with a guy who told me um, that he had a lovely um, estate in uh -huh. Malvern uh -huh. and I'd just finished designing uh, the Dalesford brand with uh, Lady Bamford so I was able to explain the brand design that we did there. We got talking about Chelsea and I explained that I, when I go around Chelsea Flower Show I kind of look at it as if there's 200,000 addicts who are addicted. Yeah. Uh, to gardening but once they bought their greenhouse there's nothing to feed their addiction mm -hmm. and um, the garden sector in the UK is worth about four billion mm -hmm. the outdoor sector in the UK is also worth about four billion that's covered in clothing but in gardening there's not really a lot of no, clothing going no, on so, right. so it seemed to me that it would be an idea to express to be able to express our love of gardening through the medium uh -huh. of clothing add to that you've got the um, youth quake of gardening that happened during COVID and mm -hmm. the urban quake of gardening yeah. that happened during COVID and the, the benefits, the real benefits people feel from coming back to mm -hmm. the land and coming back to nature. So we thought it would be a good idea if we could capture the essence of their estate mm -hmm. which has um, been in their family for 29 generations so mm -hmm. it's the longest lineage of any family estate in the country, nearly a thousand years. Mm -hmm. But the thing that is the unifying factor of that lineage is the husbandry of the land. Mm -hmm. They want to leave the land more beautiful than they found it, which has created this amazing sanctuary, so much so it was where the royal family were going to be put if Hitler had got over the channel. Oh, right. But it's been this manifestation of some of the most important creative expressions in our national identity. So Elgar, uh -huh. his dad used to tune their pianos and Elgar wrote Nimrod and the Enigma oh, Variations right. for their family. Uh -huh. Evelyn Waugh, wrote um, Brideshead Revisited at Madrasfield mm -hmm. um, and William Morris designed mm -hmm. the chapel and the decorations oh, and the arts right. and crafts movement uh -huh. and what it kind of represents well certainly the arts and crafts movement was this return to nature uh -huh. during an urban explosion and we we'll very much right. see that now so yeah. why have we chosen yeah. Manchester well Manchester's the sort of home of industrial creativity you've got yeah. the, you know the home of Ian Curtis Ian Brown the Salford Apaches, Bez, Sean Ryder, Sean Ryder's yeah, yeah. dad, um, Tony Warren of Coronation Street, great Yorkshireman, but now an iconic um, uh, Mancunian legend. <laughs> um, and so you've got this massive burgeoning of creativity. Uh -huh. And in Manchester, that creativity is characterised by three things. Humility, humanity and humour. And those three words I chose very carefully because they represent one single thing, they've got the same root word in Latin, which is humus, which means land. Mm. So the humility to know that land is more important than us, the humanity to know that we've got a responsibility to work with it, and the humour to bring us back down to the land and back down to earth. That kind of characterises, I think, uh, Manchester creativity. Mm. And so bringing the brand here to launch it here, mm. It's kind of self-evident that we're all mad about land. Um, and then working in partnership with the RHS, who've had an outreach program to more than 3,000 schools in the north. They're deep into their second century of extolling the virtues of coming back to land and being mad about land. So it just seemed the right So thing are to your do. clothes designed for working in the garden, or are they more fashion brand? No, they're designed, they're designed to be clothes, that, everyday clothes that you would wear, mm. 
redesigned and refashioned mm. to be optimized in the garden mm. and also to be designed in such a way that they can compost so if you, oh, right. you know so yeah. that there, there is an afterlife to oh, okay. it yeah. and this is very much um, a um, working concept and so we're, this is the these are all the prototypes for the summer mm. season we're winterizing them for winter and we hope to be able to sort of partner with other garden centers to, okay, to get them in great. Thank you very much. Thank Thanks you very for much sure. for coming to talk to us. Thank you. Thank you. And coming to a show like this is so much more about the plants. It's very much about the people too and what great people gardeners are. And let's go and look at more garden inspired arts and craft. This is Des Gillen from Willow Goat Crafts. The company is named after Des's first ever creation, Dimitri the Greek Goat. Des uses Willow in different ways to create artwork that people love. He works with Brown Willow and Living Willow and also hosts workshops and works with school children. And this lovely stall called Growin and Gathered featured pressed, preserved flowers and seaweed artwork. And all of the artwork was absolutely stunning. We had a lo lovely chat with the girl and um, she's an ex-biology teacher. So quite a useful occupation for um, pursuing this art form. And all the work was lovely. Some of the flowers are pressed and framed. And then she's also got some pretty little note cards, which are photographs of the pressed flowers. And I bought some of these to bring home because I just thought they were very, very beautiful. These are the ones that some of the ones that I bought, but a lovely store, really, really pretty. This artist, Emma Louise Wilson, Emma's work is meticulously handcrafted and would make an ideal present for someone who appreciates something unique and handmade. She uses mixed media artwork and is inspired by nature and everyday observations. Each piece is created using a variety of materials and art techniques which are layered to create the final composition. Emma's ceramics are predominantly made from porcelain. The next company called The Sculpts. The Sculpts is a decorative homeware and lifestyle accessories brand born in Manchester. Brain child of illustrator and architect Richard Bennett, the sculpts create surreal yet soulful designs that pay homage to industrial spirit, cultural icons and creative hedonism of the city and its surroundings. The sculpts very unique and very different style of ceramics are absolutely beautiful to look at. I mean, you study them close up, the detail that's gone into each of the images is quite remarkable. And this is the Manchester A to Z series of tiles, each one very unique and representative of Manchester's history. And time now for a quick drink at the Tippin, Emma Tippin's RHS garden representing a pub garden. And we've had a really super day, thoroughly enjoyed it. And we leave the depot at Mayfield behind and we head back to the train station and heading back home again. Liv back to university and me back to Shropshire. See you there. So I'm back home in my own garden. It's been a beautiful weekend. It's really sunny and warm and I've spent Saturday and Sunday today um, just pottering in the greenhouse and in the, and in the shed doing all these little um, jobs that are in and around the garden. But for those people who haven't got gardens, I think the Urban Show was fantastic at demonstrating that you don't need an outdoor space. You can grow, um, even if you've got no outdoor area, you can grow inside and you can grow in all sorts of ways, whether it be vertically or in all types of containers, reusing plastic um, in a new innovative way and cans and all sorts of things. So I think the measure of any good show is whether or not it inspires, whether it inspires people to get creative and try out new things. And I think the RHS did it brilliantly. Um, I think um, there were a lot of young people there and I, I just love seeing how younger people are looking at things in completely different light. Things that, as I said, houseplants and things that I kind of turn my nose up at and wasn't very keen on, how they're growing them and they look fabulous. So um, I've come home and I'm starting to look at things in a whole new light. I've just given Murphy his dinner and I was just about to toss the can in the recycling and I looked at it in a, with, a whole, with new eyes and thought, oh, that would look lovely with little plants growing in it. So you don't need a budget. 
you don't need um, anything fancy. You can make things look good. I think the symbol of the show would be that little brick. We saw a little tiny, tiny brick with, with a little hole planted out with a little plant. It looks so cute. And I think for me, that sort of symbolized what the urban show stood for. And credit to whoever came up with the concept of having it in that building. I assumed it was going to be in a kind of shiny Excel um, NEC type of building, very modern. And, um, and when, I, when we turned up, I was really quite surprised. And it was just the perfect backdrop, apart from it being freezing. But apart from that, it was the perfect backdrop for everything that they had there. It really just looked so, so good. So whoever came up with that really well done and the people and the amount of work that it, that um, that went into making that show come alive i hope very much that they will repeat this in some form or another in um, years going forward so really excited to see what happens again if it does happen again next year so hope you enjoyed that very different from anything else we've been to thank you very much for watching and thank you to all the people who we've met and chatted to at the show it's just lovely meeting like-minded gardeners thank you very much for watching and join us again in the next video bye for now